might have think that you've seen it all on my channel, with a flying submarine or the 800 marine dropship. But what if I told you there was a serious plan to convert the Boeing 747 into a weapon of mass destruction? Imagine a platform carrying up to 100 cruise missiles, being able to strike anywhere in the world. But what went wrong? Let's dive in deep into the peak of the Cold War and indulge in the ideas of engineers with creative freedom and way too much money to spend. There is no doubt that the Boeing 747 in its various configurations has been one of the most successful and well-known aircraft designs in commercial aviation, used by both passenger and cargo airlines around the world. It's such an iconic plane that even the President of the United States flies around in a heavily customized version of one. There is a reason why the Boeing 747 was called the Queen of the Skies, soon after it first entered service in the colors of Pan Am on January 22nd, 1970. But Boeing is not just a commercial aircraft manufacturer. It's long been in the business of military aircraft too. One example of a Boeing military aircraft is the legendary B-52 bomber, first introduced in 1955. And so it was back in the late 1970s that Boeing actively lobbied the military and politicians in order to push its militarized version of the 747, and it would be called the Cruise Missile Carrier Aircraft, or CMCA for short. Why the Boeing choose to push its 747 CMCA at that time is central to understanding the project and also to wonder why did the military decide not to take up Boeing on its offer of a missile bearing 747. By the late 1970s, the economy of the United States was stagnant due to the global oil crisis earlier in the decade and the huge rise of inflation. That's why the administration of President Jimmy Carter felt compelled to cancel the B-1A program due to fiscal concerns. And so the corporation put forward its low-risk and relatively cheap cruise missile delivery project based on its 747 as an alternative. The Boeing project was in fact punted by the Carter administration during 1979 as a viable, cheaper option for the country's military. Boeing's proposal was very simple, turn its world-famous long-haul commercial aircraft into a flying arsenal delivery system capable of carrying between 50 and 100 air-launched cruise missiles, or ALCMs. The AGM-86 winged cruise missile, which was 21 feet or 6.4 meters in length, was a popular choice of the US military at the time. In fact, it still remains in use today. And it was that missile around which the 747 CMCA concept was developed by Boeing. Context was everything. The United States was enjoying a significant advantage over the Soviet Union in the development of the cruise missile at the time. Not surprisingly, in the 1970s, it was marked by the US military trying to find every way in which this advantage over the Soviets could be exploited for both air and sea launched cruise missiles. The AGM-86 ALCM was also built by Boeing, by the way, so it made sense that Boeing would be confident of its aircraft's ability to house the very missiles that it also designed and manufactured. Quite the lucrative sandwich. Besides the Boeing 747, the US Air Force was also considering the Lockheed C-5, the L-1011, the C-141, and the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 as alternatives as an airborne missile carrier. And there were also plans for a Lockheed supercarrier that would have been a nuclear-powered arsenal bird. But that's a video for another time. The CMCA was immensely simple as a concept, of course. What made the Boeing CMCA its appealing option was its configuration for the purpose of deploying missiles and importantly, its potential payload. Because the 747 was so big, 
it could carry 72 AGM-86 cruise missiles on a single mission, compared to the famous B-52 bomber, which could only carry up to 20 missiles for a single sortie. So how would it work? Well, lucky for us, the patents are available online for free. The configuration inside the 747 would have been as straightforward as the overall design concept. It would be based on the 747-200C, which was a nose-loading cargo derivative of the famous airline. The cargo hold would house nine rotary launches mounted on racks in the interior of the stripped-out cabin. Each rotary launcher would contain eight missiles, with each missile sliding back into a launch position at the rear right of the aircraft. And this would be achieved with the aid of an overhead handling system. As for how the missiles would launch, this would be via a bay door at the right of the 747's tail cone. When needed, this bay door would open and an injector system would punch the missiles out into the airstream. Missiles could be injected either one at a time in either direction, or they could be injected out in rapid fire succession. Flight International has stated that Boeing also proposed both the 747-200F and the 747-SP as potential cruise missile carriers. Because of the various different sizes of these aircrafts, the 747-200F would carry 72 missiles, whilst the 747-SP, being smaller, would only carry 48. But as its design, it would have a longer range. Another fantastic feature of these aircraft was its strategy in battle system, was that the missiles on the CMCA could be reprogrammed via satellite links and other forms of communication when the aircraft was already airborne. And where would the command and control and network relay functions be kept of the CMCA? Why, inside that famous hump of the 747, behind the cockpit, which was normally reserved for first class passengers. The people at Boeing had thought it all out. Another plus of using the Boeing 747 to launch these AGM-86 missiles was that they would have a range of 500 to 1,500 miles or 805 to 2,414 kilometers, which means that the 747 CMCA could deploy massive numbers of cruise missiles whilst remaining well outside the enemy's airspace. Equally important is that the massive range meant that the CMCA could be deployed thousands of miles from its home base, making it a fuel efficient and logistically flexible military aircraft. And better still, the 747's already impressive range could be extended further with mid-air refueling. So you can already see a mission profile of having these planes continuously patrol a hostile nation's border with the missiles reprogrammed whilst in flight for deployment at a moment's notice. And of course, we can't forget the other key feature of the CMCA was its cost benefit. According to the RAND Corporation, which knows a thing or two about the costing of war, the focus of research and development should be on creating and deploying sophisticated weapons, since they're usually cheaper than developing sophisticated delivery platforms. Meaning you want to reuse any large plane that you've already designed and built, say for commercial service, rather than creating something bespoke. Cough, cough, Lockheed. This logic is that relatively unsophisticated delivery platforms, as I like to call them, should be used wherever possible, with the bulk of military budget spent instead on the sophisticated long-range weapons they carry, like the cruise missiles. The Washington DC consultancy has even made direct reference to the Boeing 747 missile arsenal plane in its assessment as being precisely that type of unsophisticated, relatively inexpensive delivery platforms. So if it had thumbs up from everybody, why was it never built? Now, you see, there were some drawbacks of the CMCA concept. The Air Force in particular had issues with a wide-body aircraft capable of carrying so many cruise missiles, in that enemy forces would almost certainly view them as highly lucrative targets in strategic terms. As such, a modified CMCA aircraft, such as the Boeing 747, might be the target of immense efforts by the enemy to 
down it before it could reach its location for deployment. And there were also other issues with the 747 CMCA due to its design and aerodynamic characteristics. These included the introduction of air turbulence into the weapon bay when the missiles were being deployed, especially if the aircraft was traveling at a very high speed. That turbulence could cause the transfer of high structural loads into the missiles, as well as the launcher itself and any other hydraulic or electronical equipment located within the cargo area holding the missiles. There would also be an increase in aerodynamic drag when the weapon bay doors were opened. But perhaps the most damning aspect of Boeing's CMCA may have well been that it would have almost definitely placed a big, fat, mobile target on every single Boeing 747 in flight across the whole world. And there were many of them up in the air at that time. Awful images invariably come to mind of the tragic Korean Airlines flight KAL-007, which was struck down by the Soviet Union on September 1st, 1983, when the airliner strayed too far into Soviet airspace. The pilot of the Soviet Su-15 interceptor shot down that Boeing 747 because the Soviet Union was convinced that Americans were secretly ferrying military hardware on that Korean airliner. Now, just imagine if it was officially confirmed that customized 747s were flying around laden with cruise missiles. Perhaps some of them even nuclear tipped. After all, it wasn't the first time that the US forces came up with an idea to launch nuclear missiles from 747s. Remember that project? If you haven't seen it already, you can watch it right here on the channel. An easy counter argument is that Boeing's 707 airliner had already been converted into a tanker aircraft called the KC-135 as soon as 1957. And that's all very well, except that the KC-135 based on the 707 wasn't capable of raining cruise missiles over an enemy territory. It only carried fuel and the possibilities for counter-deception are also heart-stopping. For example, the enemy could have easily re-sprayed their own 747 in, say, DHL or FedEx livery, spoof the tracking signal, and then fly straight into someone else's airspace under the guise of a friendly aircraft, and then release their cruise missiles. Simply terrifying. In the end, the 747 CMCA was never chosen. The administration of President Ronald Reagan decided to pass the Boeing project in favor of reviving the B-1 Lancer strategic bomber project, as well as the later B-2 or Advanced Tactical Bomber program. The Reagan crowd also decided to upgrade the existing and still highly popular B-52 fleet, a workhorse of the US military that continues to be used today. And yet, there are those that still believe the aircraft was a sound idea. Military pundits have suggested that Boeing CMCAs would probably have operated at a much lower cost than the B-1 or B-52 aircraft that have done missions in the last few decades. Experts have also contended that the CMCA may have actually been ahead of its time. Those experts are convinced that smart munitions guided by GPS and embedded with artificial intelligence would have been perfect for the militarized 747. And that technology only came about more than two decades after the project was shelved. And who's to say that the military wouldn't have swapped out those missiles for drones, resulting in something far more terrifying, a real life arsenal bird. The Boeing 747 CMCA wasn't a daft or crazy concept by any means, but only one among many attempts to convert a commercial platform into a military aircraft. Other examples include the E3 Sentry or the Japanese Boeing 767, as well as the 707 KC-135. But alas, perhaps for Boeing's missile-deploying jumbo jet, it was simply ahead of its time after all. Speaking of being ahead of time, if you want to see these videos ahead of time, then jump onto Patreon, where you can see videos early, you can chat with me directly, and you can even suggest future topics. 
And if you don't wanna just do that, then you can also jump onto channel memberships with that little join button down below. Both have the same perks and give you exclusive access to a special area of the business class Discord. That's right, I've also got a Discord, so if you haven't seen that before, come over and join in the conversation with other fans just like you. Like really, if you're actually still watching this right now, come and join the Discord, it's super easy to use. Uh, and I'll be right there in the introductions to say welcome. So thanks again so much for watching.